Live from San Jose, in the heart of Silicon Valley, it's theCUBE, covering AWS Summit 2016. Hey, welcome everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We are live in Santa Clara, California at AWS Summit Santa Clara, one of many of the AWS Summit shows that they put on all over the United States as well as all over the world. Over 4,000 people showed up here today to get the latest update from Dr. Matt Wood, who's going to give the keynote here in about a half an hour, as well as the ecosystem that's really here in force. And these are the smaller shows that they do before the big granddaddy of Mall, which is AWS reInvent. Uh, which is later this year, be sure to register. They're expecting over 25,000 people. So we're excited to be here, and we're really excited because we have a new uh, hostess, uh, Lisa Martin. Lisa, welcome to AWS Summit. Thanks, Jeff, it's great to be part of the CUBE family. So what do you think of the vibe here? We've been here for a couple days setting up and a lot of action this morning. The momentum is, is palpable. You can see and hear the excitement. People are very excited to hear what's going to be announced today by Dr. Matt Wood. Amazon's clearly been disrupting in this space for a while. They've been leaders in the market for a very long time and I think the buzz is what's next? Where are they going? What more can we do? Yeah, they just keep kicking tail, right? I guess yesterday was Amazon Prime Day which they set record yeah. revenue numbers. Yes, we're live. They want everybody to go. Uh, exit the exit hall at this time So on that house cleaning note, uh, for the keynotes, which will start uh, at the top of the hour, go to uh, just Google AWS Summit Santa Clara. We'll have the URL, which is very long and hard to, to type. Uh, register for the keynotes. You do have to register to see the keynotes, so we will not be showing them on the queue. What we will show are some highlights from AWS reInvent last year. We've got four really great episodes teed up for you. I'll just go ahead and talk about those now while we're on the topic. Andy Jassy, a rare sit down with Randy, uh, Andy Jassy, the CEO of AWS. He does not do a ton of interviews. We're really happy to get him on last year. Uh, Glenn Gore really introducing Amazon's move into the IoT space with some kits that they put together with Intel and examples of what you can do uh, with the Amazon kind of IoT package. We've got that interview keyed up for you. Uh, Mylin is going to talk about Snowball. What is Snowball? Well, sometimes the internet, or as somebody said on a CUBE interview the other day, the speed of light is just too slow. When you got to send a bunch of data into the uh, AWS data centers, sometimes they'll just ship you, a, they call it the Snowball, it's a little mini server thing. You send it in and they load your data. So my Lynn's going to be talking about Snowball, which will also be talked about here at the show today. And then finally, Terry Wise and Jeff Erratic talking about, um, you know, kind of Accenture's move into the AWS space. You know the big integrators don't make a move unless they see opportunity. They don't make a move unless they see an opportunity to make some money. So the fact that the ecosystem has gone well beyond kind of the original test dev routes into a big giant global SI like Accenture, really an indication of, of uh, Amazon's continuing ascension into the enterprise space. But let's talk about uh, that, Lisa, before we jump in. You know, Amazon just keeps making moves. They just keep executing. They just keep growing really a tough force to uh, slow down. Absolutely it is, and you know, they've, they're a $10 billion run rate business. They've got customers from the enterprise like Salesforce. In fact, just a couple months ago, they made an announcement about an expansion in their partnership with uh, Salesforce. Startups born in the cloud, Netflix, Spotify, for example, even in the public sector. And last year at the summit in 2015 at Moscone Center, they actually talked about the enterprise file system, so uh, or the Elastic file system, really a direct target against those incumbent storage vendors looking to get into the enterprise. And in fact, last week at the summit in London at the AWS summit, their CTO made a very clear statement regarding um, enterprise vendors and they're traditionally not looking after their customers. So, so Amazon clearly for a while has seen this as a big opportunity to continue their momentum and continue their disruption. It, it's funny, you, you just Google Amazon market share, AWS market share, depending on what chart you look at, what analyst firm, it's all over the map, it's 35% market share, 65% market share, but they are heads and tails above the closest com competition. Depending on which report you look, sometimes number two is IBM, surprisingly, sometimes uh, number two is Microsoft and Azure. Uh, sometimes, you know, Google Cloud Platform always gets mentioned. Then there's other people like Rackspace, but th they are just heads and tails above, not only in total revenue, which they broke out uh, publicly, I think last year, 
like you said, over $10 billion run rate, but also in year-over-year -year growth. I mean, they are really disrupting this industry. And there are, our uh, housekeeper is back. Please go see Matt Wood if you're here in the building. It's live TV. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so everybody's just going to go see Matt again. If you want to watch Matt, just Google uh, AWS Summit Santa Clara and follow the instructions to register to watch the keynote. Or stay here on the Cube, and like I said, we'll have those replays running. But again, Lisa, they just keep they keep executing. So, what are you hoping to see here today? We've got a great lineup. Maybe you can kind of kind of take us through the lineup and, and some of the people that we'll have on. We do the have Cube. a great lineup. In fact, uh, what we're talking about is really with a spectrum of partners across the AWS IaaS uh, infrastructure. We've got our first guest, Wan Disco, the CEO, who's also a Cube veteran. He's going to be talking about what they're doing with Active Active Replication and AWS. We've got Chef coming on, talking about some recipes for automation for their customers using AWS Public Cloud. Then from an analytics perspective, Big Data Hadoop, New Relic is coming in to talk to us about what they're doing to help customers gain instant uh, insight to take action on data stored in the cloud. From storage perspective, we have Zandara, their CEO, also a CUBE veteran. Interesting, storage as a service vendor, going to be talking about how they're partnering and helping companies also to use uh, their storage as a service with uh, with AWS. From a migration perspective, I think one of the topics, Jeff, that we're going to hear today about is mass migration. We talked about the enterprise a moment ago. There's a big pattern that's been happening for a while. Enterprises moving workloads into the cloud, a massive challenge problem there. Going to talk with Corp Info about mass migration, as well as the competency, uh, partner competency program that AWS has for integrator partners like Corp Info. And finally, we're going to talk with Cisco about some networking and what it is that Cisco is doing with AWS. It's, it's interesting, you kind of take the classic kind of data center infrastructure companies that, like Cisco, we've had NetApp on before, talked about Zadar, that have businesses outside of the AWS ecosystem, but for a lot of them, they're also now doing business inside the AWS ecosystem. As you can see here by the floor, like I said, 4,000 people showing up. We'll get the number on how many uh, sponsor companies are, there are, and again, if you go down to Reinvent at the Sands Convention Center later, I think it's the last week of September, early October, you know, the, there will be over 25,000 people and in a huge ecosystem uh, of people there to take advantage of what Amazon offers and what AWS offers to its customers. So it should be a terrific day. Exactly, and some of the, one of the things I'm particularly interested about is you know, Amazon has always been positioned for the full stack developer in terms of target audience for um, hybrid IT. Well, one of the things that we've seen in organizations is a shift in decision making from out of IT into the hands of the C-suite, uh, the lines of business. So I'm curious to see how their target audience is changing and positioning standpoint, uh, as well as technology, to meet that, what's clearly an internal cultural shift going on within organizations, probably mostly in the enterprise. So I'm very interested to see a cultural perspective of how AWS helps customers in the enterprise space, and even the smaller space, to deal with the shift of power, the shift of buying power, as they're looking to not if we're going to move to cloud, but when and with whom. Right, and as you tripped on too, it, it's really the, this whole hybrid cloud concept, right? And if you ask 15 people what's a hybrid cloud, you'll actually get 16 answers back, because we've been doing that a lot. The Wikibon team is, has put together some research actually on what is a true hybrid cloud, how do you define a hybrid cloud, and all kind of the classic uh, legacy infrastructure folks are pushing hybrid cloud, why? Because they like to sell private clouds. And, and there are, to be, to be fair, some things that just can't go into um, a public cloud for lots of regula regulatory reasons, compliance reasons, whatever. But um, they don't talk about hybrid cloud at Amazon. You know, they just talk about the Amazon cloud. So that's going to be an interesting conversation. The other piece, I think, is really the whole security conversation. Security continues to be a hot topic. Uh, most recently <laughs> touched upon with this Pokemon Go thing, which is kind of bananas, um, as a little access on the public side, but really on the corporate side, security is a big deal but it's not necessarily clear if a public cloud is less secure than a private cloud because we know a lot of breaches are internal, they're disgruntled employees, there are laptops that get stolen. And so the security conversation has moved and, and, and is morphing and is not necessarily just that big uh, red flag of why people don't want to go to public cloud. 
Um, the other kind of conversation is because of the economics of public cloud, for a lot of CIOs we talk to at other shows, the question is not if public cloud, but why not public cloud? Tell me why we shouldn't put this in there. So the, really the conversations and, the, and the, the scope and the tone of the conversations have changed dramatically, again, because Amazon just continues to drive innovation, to drive price reduction, to drive just this just grind of uh, ongoing features and benefits within the product set as well as you know, the offers and the solutions, and then of course this vibrant ecosystem that people can leverage by going to AWS. Exactly, and on the security front, security and compliance, as Jeff, you mentioned, have long been a concern of a lot of organizations in terms of a migration to cloud. It's happening, it needs to happen. We're also seeing that shift that I mentioned in terms of buying power. One of the things that, that we're seeing reports on is that security and compliance, yes, still a big challenge, and we'll talk about that with our guests today, about how they help customers mitigate that challenge. But also another challenge is when the buying power is shifting to the C-suite or the lines of business is um, a lack of, of internal resources and knowledge so the role of the cloud architect is instrumental at these companies. So how does that role uh, play here in public cloud to mitigate the, those internal resource uh, limitations that are coming to the forefront as one of those challenges? Yeah, well we're so happy to be here and cover the story. Uh, obviously cloud, big data are just massive shifts in, in our time. We go to all the cloud shows, we go to the IBM shows, the HP shows. Uh, we go to the, all the big data, the hottest new things within Docker, DockerCon and containers that's happening there on the development side and the DevOps side, as well as Spark and Databricks and you know, kind of the evolution of Hadoop. All these things are hitting. It's just a, a, a tsunami, kind of a, a perfect storm, if you will, of exciting times in this industry. We're happy to go out to the events and we'll be at reInvent. Um, so stay tuned, we're going to cut over uh, to the keynote shortly, Dr. Wood will be on. They didn't give us any advance notice. We don't know any of the super secret surprises he's going to share, because they just don't do that here. So we'll be watching it with you. We'll be back after the keynotes, live with our wall-to-wall -wall coverage, interviews all day long. Again, you could either sign over and watch the keynote, or you can stay on uh, siliconangle.tv and we'll run those replays from reInvent. We've also got a crew out at MIT at the Chief Data Officer and Information Quality Symposium. Say that three times fast. Uh, great event at MIT, so you can tune in there at siliconangle.tv. So we'll be here all day. Lisa, look forward to uh, working with you, and we're going to cut out for now. Jump over to the keynotes. I'm Jeff Frick. You're watching theCUBE. Thanks for watching.